you for salvation on today, oh God. We don't care about the clothes that someone has on today, oh God. But we care about souls on today, oh God. We want souls to be saved today, oh God. Oh God, yes God, yes God. So we thank you today, oh God, for this Resurrection Sunday, Father. And we say, have your way in us individually, God. Have your way in us collectively, oh God. Resurrect us even now, God. Revive us, oh God. Revive us even now, God. Blow on us today, oh God. Blow on us today, God. Blow in this place on today, God. Let the wind of your glory, God. Blow in the house on today, oh God. The wind of your glory, God. Let it blow in the house on today, oh God. So we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the new thing that you're doing in this house on today, God. And we say you be God. You be God in the house on today, God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Father. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you this morning that we are on this side with you, God. We thank you, God, that your son decided to lay his life down and shed the blood for the remission of our sins. We thank you, God, that we have life and we have it more abundantly. Oh, God, we thank you this morning that you woke us up in our right minds. We thank you, God, this morning that we are able to see, God. We thank you, God, that we can hear this morning. Oh, God, thank you for doing the right thing with us in our hearts, God. We thank you this morning for the activities of our limbs. We thank you, God, this morning, hallelujah, as the blood pumped through our heart. We thank you, God, this morning for your word that's about to come forth. We thank you, God, this morning for life. We we thank you, God, this morning to be resurrected with you, to be resonate in your spirit, and baby, to resonate in your spirit. We thank you, God, this morning, hallelujah, for what you're getting ready to do. We thank you, God, this morning for your blessings. We thank you, God, this morning for your favor. We thank you, God, this morning for your grace. We thank you, God, this morning because you love us. We thank you, God, this morning for forgiving us of our sins. We thank you, God, this morning for letting us wake up, God. Oh, we thank you, God, this morning for keeping us, God, oh, and with all of the trouble around us, God. We thank you, God, how your angels are protecting us. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that we can open our mouths. We thank you, God, this morning that we have the power to clap our hands. We thank you, God, this morning for your people, God. We thank you, God, as you stir up the gift in our lives. Oh, God, we thank you this morning for being Adonai, the master over all things, God. No matter what we see, God, we know no power is greater than your power. Oh, we thank you, God, this morning, hallelujah, for your grace, which is sufficient. We thank you, God, this morning for your mercy, God. Oh, thank you, God, for every soul who's going to come up on the parking lot, God. And as they open the door, God, and they beat us the concrete, God, oh, let your spirit swarm them, God. Oh, we thank you, God, this morning for the plan of salvation. We thank you, God, this morning, hallelujah, because you are a good God. You are a great God. You are the God who sit high and who look low. You are the God who know all things. You are the God who's sovereign and who's powerful. You are the God that we can trust in. You are the God that we can believe. You are the God that we know that's going to supply all of our needs. You are the God that's going to open a door for many things. You are the God who's going to strategically give us the plan to move forward, God. And as we pray today, God, we pray, God, that you will bless your people, that you will bless the house, God. Send your Holy Spirit in, God, to resonate the atmosphere, God. Oh, control the service today, God. Have your way, God. Do as you please, God. Oh, we thank you, God. We'll be so ever careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. I'm going to 
going to have your scripture reading today out of the New Living Translation. We're going to be reading from Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 1. And it reads, Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way there, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. This is what we celebrate today. The risen Savior, the one who can change hearts, change minds, change lives. We give him all honor, glory, and praise. And may God add blessings to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his word this day. Amen. Oh, what a day. <laughs> Easter Sunday morning. Hallelujah, Lord God. Can I tell you today that the grave matters? The grave matters. Hallelujah, Lord God. Why does it matter? Because it symbolizes that we have the victory. Death could not keep him. The grave could not hold him. Hallelujah. That lets us know that we have the victory. Hallelujah, Lord. So we thank God for this Resurrection Sunday. God has resurrected some things in our lives. We all should have a grave. Why? Because in the grave, that's where some things are left behind. We all should have a grave. I have a grave. I haven't always been saved. I haven't always been the person that I am on today. So I thank God for my grave. Why? Because my grave symbolizes to me that I have victory. Victory over everything that the enemy tried to use to kill me. Hallelujah, Lord God. I have victory over it. You've got victory over some things too. That's why we're here today to celebrate the resurrection power of Christ in our lives, the things that we have victory over. So I dare you today to stand with the praise and worship team and give God praise and glory because we have victory over our individual graves. The things that tried to hold us back, the tree, the things that tried to kill us, my God, we got victory over those things. Why? Because of Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. They thought when they buried him in the grave that that was it. But that wasn't the end. It was just the beginning. So it is with us. The things that tried to hold us, the grave that tried to hold us, they thought that it was the end. Oh, but we got away. Hallelujah, Lord. We got away. And because of that, we owe God a praise. We owe God worship. Now, we all got our pretty clothes on, our new suits and everything else that we went about this week. Thank God for the new clothes. The new clothes, to me, symbolize that I'm a new creature in Christ. But don't let the new clothes keep you from praising God. Don't let the new clothes keep you from worshiping God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You know, these babies walk around with their Easter baskets, and I get excited when I see those little plastic eggs. You know why? Because when they break the egg open, that's a symbolization to me that the tomb, the grave, was open. Hallelujah, Lord God. The new clothes, we're new creatures in Christ. The egg. 
graves when they are open. It's a symbolization that they, the grave couldn't hold us, that we are new creatures in Christ. Y'all, we see God in all these little bitty things that the kids have. We need to get excited about Resurrection Sunday. Had it not been for God, had it not been for Christ, we wouldn't be standing here on today. Come on, praise and worship team. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Such a special way.
it's Resurrection Sunday. But this is not the end. Hallelujah, Lord. There's a glorious day. My God. He's coming back. Hallelujah, Lord God. We don't know when he's coming back. No one knows. My God. But we do know that he's coming back. My God. And what a glorious day. But the question is, will you be ready? That's the question. Will you be ready? My God. Lord God, we get excited about Easter, we get excited about Resurrection Sunday, but we need to get excited knowing that one day he's coming back. But will we be ready? That's the question we have to ask ourselves individually. Will we be ready? Will I be ready when Christ returns? Ah, God. We don't know when we're going to fall at the beginning of the line. And our number will be called. But will we be ready. Will I be ready? I can't answer for anybody else. I can only answer for myself. Will I be ready? That's the question that we need to ponder on this Resurrection Sunday. Will I be ready, my God, when he returns? Woo! Thank you, Lord God. We thank our praise and worship team. Thank you, Lord God. And we're up to our digital welcome at this time. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Welcome to One Purpose. Three churches in Covenant Fellowship. Welcome to One Purpose. Three churches in Covenant Fellowship. United as one to pray, praise, worship, build, and perfect for God's kingdom. We invite you to connect with us for our weekly services. Sunday School, 9 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship, 10.30 a.m. Tuesday, in-person and Zoom prayer and Bible study, 7 p.m. Wednesday, Word Wisdom with Counselor Billy Washington, 8 p.m. The Prayer Wall. 6 a.m. Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday 7 a.m. all in the Central Standard Time Zones. For more information visit our websites. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us in one purpose. If so will you please raise your hand if we have any first-time visitors in the house on today. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our leaders, we thank God for our first-time visitors on today. If you'll keep your hands in the air, if they can put a little something in your hand, Evangelist Titus, I see you over there. <laughs> if you'll keep your hands in the air, just a token to say how much we appreciate you and thank God that he put us on your heart to come out and fellowship with us today. Not only our visitors in the sanctuary, but we thank God for our online visitors on today. We say welcome. We thank God that you chose to tune in with us on today here at One Purpose. Amen. We pray that something will be said on today that will prick your hearts, that will keep us on your mind, and you will come back to visit with us again. Our announcements on today, on April the 15th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, we will have our volunteer day at the Midwest Food Bank. 6741 Midway Road there in Halton City. And you can see Sister, um, I don't want to call her, First Lady, Sanithia Walker. Amen. Wave your hand, First Lady Walker, so they could, that's First Lady Walker. If you want to participate, see First Lady Walker. We need at least 10 volunteers. Also on that day, we'll be having our Minister's Intense Boot Camp. Beginning at 10 a.m., amen. We've got one minister in the house that's excited, amen. Whether you're excited or not, Bishop expects us to be there, 10 a.m. sharp. April 16th, 3 p.m., will be our afternoon service with Minister Chafin in charge, amen. We look forward to that. Y'all keep him lifted in prayer this week as he goes before the Lord to seek the Lord, what he would have for us. And then on April the 22nd at 10 a.m., that Saturday is our grocery giveaway. Workers, be here by 8 a.m. Starting tomorrow, somebody say tomorrow. Oh, I didn't hear enough people say tomorrow. Everybody in the house say tomorrow. 
Amen. Now, what are you saying tomorrow for? Because tomorrow begins our 12 days of fasting and prayer. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Our 12 days of fasting and prayer begins on tomorrow. And you can see our Facebook page for the daily prayer points. So please go to the Facebook page to take note of the daily prayer points for each of those 12 days. What are we fasting and praying for leading up to throne room? Amen. Our annual throne room women's conference, the theme is SOAR, hallelujah, Lord, will be April the 28th and the 29th. And registration is free for Saturday. You can go to www.thekcm.org www.thekcm.org All right, if you didn't get your t-shirt, looks like you missed out. But guess what? You can still come. Even if you don't have your t-shirt, you are yet welcome to participate in Throne Room. So we are excited for the mighty move of God that is going to happen in Throne Room on this year. So just because you didn't get your t-shirt, don't let that keep you at home. Come on out and participate. We are in expectation after our 12 days of fasting and prayer, what God will do at Throne Room. Amen. So now we are up to our welcome. We're going to greet each other. We did our digital welcome. Now we're going to greet each other in the sanctuary. Whether you want to do a fist, fist bump, arm bump, however the Holy Spirit leads you, but we want to greet each other. Church today. Church today. We're excited. We're excited to see you today. Please accept our love. Please accept our love. As we share our heart. Church today. Welcome to church 
Bless the Lord, everybody. Tell your neighbor, say, he got up from that grave. Now, the reason why he had to die, he had to die because of all the stuff that we did wrong. You know, that stuff that you did that somebody, you know, some people you ain't told nothing about. Your mama still don't know about. <laughs> God died for that. He sent his son to die for our sins. That we don't have to pay the penalty for our sins. He meant, isn't that good? That God, it, it goes deeper than that. You know, I don't have time to really go on, but it goes so much deeper than that. See, when God met Abraham, he told Abraham, he said, look, I'm going to make a promise with you. I'm going to bless your seed. He said, I'm going to make covenant that I'm going to save him. He said, but this covenant that I'm going to make, because you got to understand covenant. Covenant was that when they would go into covenant, they would take some pigeons and some different birds and they would cut them in half. They would put one half on one side, another half, and they would let the blood flow in the middle. And they would walk through the blood and say, if I don't keep my end of the co covenant, may the same thing happen to my life. So it cost you a life if you didn't fulfill, he meant the covenant. And so God said, Abraham, you can't uphold the covenant that I'm going to make with you. So I'm going to put you to sleep. I'm going to let you watch it, but I'm going to make covenant with myself. God said, because I wanted to save man so bad, I made covenant with myself. God is awesome. That's how he made covenant even with us. And then he said, look, and, and because I have to pay the penalty for sin, could nobody pay the penalty because there was nobody righteous. So God came down in the form of his son, which was himself, and he came and he said, look, I got to fulfill the covenant that I made, so I got to shed my blood. God had to die for us. Oh, God, help us. Amen. Because he wanted man to be saved that much. And all he says, all you got to do is accept what I've already done. That's the only thing you required to do. When you accept it, see people say, when I get myself together, you ain't gonna never get yourself together. That's why he sent his son. But when you receive the provisions that he made, then he'll help you get yourself together. Ah, oh, God, help us. We thank the Lord. Our God is awesome. Well, we're going to have an offering. It's offering time. We don't want to hold the, the time because we got the speaker that's coming up. And we just want to amen. Just thank you. I wish you a happy, a blessed, resurrected day. Amen. That God raised his son from the dead. Now, I'm glad that he died. But I'm ecstatic that he got up. Because if he didn't get up, the scripture says, eat, drink, and be merry. In other words, let's have a party because we all die tomorrow. But because he got up, amen. That's why you can pray because he's making intercession on the right hands of the Father, making intercession for us because he got up. That's why we can pray because he will answer prayer because he got up, amen, and he's still alive. And we thank God for it. At this time, amen, we're getting ready to sow seed into ministry. He meant that we're going to allow, he meant to sow a seed. He meant, what is a seed? A seed is what God left on record. He said, look, if you want me to, if you want me to be able to pour back into your life, he says, I'm giving you a seed. He said, I'm going to let it always remain seed time and harvest on the earth. I thank God that he did that. Because without a seed, you can never have reproduction. None of us would be here without a seed. You couldn't, you couldn't go and eat that, that Easter dinner without a seed. He meant that, that, that pig would have been safe because there wouldn't have been no more pig to eat. He meant them greens because there was no seed. There would be no more greens, no more yams. Huh? It would be nothing without the seed. And so because there's a seed that God said the seed will reproduce itself, the same it comes when you want, when God wants to put resources back into your hand. He says, as you give, I will give it back unto you. Press down, shaking together, run it over, shall man give unto your bosom. So we thank God for that process. We standing as we pray. This is Rose of Sharon. This is, I'm going to repair the breach, Rose of Sharon, and praise sinner. Amen. Father, as we come before you at this time, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We pray that you would bless your people, bless the giver according to your word. You said if we would cast our bread upon the water, it shall return many days hence unto us. Now, God, we pray for the harvest to come back in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You'll be led by the ushers, amen, to come around to be able to give offering.
children can be released to go into the uh, to the rear. Amen. If you like them to go, they can go at this time. Amen. For Children's Church. Amen. Amen. All right. We thank the Lord for them. Well, we're getting ready to hear the word. We thank God, amen, for Pastor Billy Counselor Washington to come that's going to break the bread of life on with us today. Amen. This is the most most celebrated day in Christendom because this is the day of our liberation. This is the day that we were set free from sin. Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law. Amen. And he came to fulfill the law that we can come into the New Testament. The tester had to die in order for us to have the New Testament. What is the testament? It's a will. Before the will becomes active, the person who wrote the will has to die. So if Big Mama left you $10 million, you can't get it until Big Mama died. And if Big Mama outlive you, you won't never see it because the will doesn't go in effect until she dies. Well, we wouldn't have the New Testament until Jesus died for the old. And he ushered in a better covenant, which that now we receive by faith. Well, at this time, let's receive our own Pastor Washington with the word of amen. Come on and preach this morning. Just go ahead and play anything, brother. It just sounds good to me. Yes, yes. like empty pitchers before a full fountain asking you to strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down and we want to balance our prayer on this morning with an attitude of gratitude thank you for so loving the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We just want to pause and meditate on your goodness. Thank you for another chance to come to the house of the Lord and to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Now, God, we need your word. We can't make it without your word. You even said if we continue in your word, then are we your disciples and we shall know the truth. And the truth shall make us free. So God, send your word. Let us receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May God bless you. You may be seated this time. We'll read the scripture in just a minute. But I want to start off by saying, giving honor to God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and to the under shepherd of this house. And that's none other than my pastor, Bishop Donald H. Butler. I don't mind you giving a hand. Yes. Of course, besides every good man, there's a good woman. So that would be Dr. Yolanda Butler. May God bless you also. I want to thank him publicly for giving me this opportunity to stand before you. This is the greatest honor a preacher can receive is to have his pastor give him the privilege to preach on the greatest day celebration in the history of mankind. And that's to celebrate the resurrection. Now, Pastor Walker, may God bless you. And First Lady Walker, may God bless you. Been praying for me down through the years, encouraging my heart. A week doesn't go by with him not sending me a text message with words of exhortation. Amen. So I thank God for Pastor, my brother, and the facts are God's going to send his word today. And I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of St. John. 21st chapter. I think Minister Matthew is going to help us out a little bit. And we're just going to read the word of the Lord. The 21st chapter of the book of St. John, beginning at verse 15. And when he had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lamb. Verse 16. I don't know why is he messing with Peter like this. He says unto him the second time, Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. But he's steady messing with Peter. The 17th verse, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Would you repeat this thought after me today? It's entitled, The Calling is still calling. You may be seated. That just sounded so good. Can we just say it one more time? The calling is still calling. There's no such thing as retirement when it comes to working out your own salvation. No such monster. Jacob was dying. He had lived his life. He was dying. The Bible said he was dying. But then Joseph, his son, walked in with his grandkids. And when he saw his grandkids, the Bible said Jacob was dying. But when he saw his grandkids, the Bible said Israel set up. He saw an appointment or an occasion to minister again before he takes his last breath. So he rebuked death long enough to set up so that he can lay hands on his grandson because he realized if he still has a pulse, God still has a plan. One more time. The calling is still calling. You don't get to quit because you backslid. The calling is still calling. 
The Bible says, the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, verse 29, that gifts and callings are without repentance. That means that God never changes his mind. If you're going to be a preacher that's living a raggedy life, you just be a preacher that's living a raggedy life, but the calling is still calling. And then when you stand before God in the judgment, you'll have to give an account of that raggediness. But you're still going to be able to preach because the calling is still calling. Samson, can I, I'm going to be a little bit rough this morning. Not, not, not rebuking rough, but I'm going to use some, some, some street talk. Samson was hoarded around like a dog in heat. I, I, you know, you're going to have to pray for me because I'm, I'm from the hood. And it just comes out at me. And, 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 and he messed around and got with Delilah, and that woman tricked him and got his eyes put out. So now he can't see, and they got him tied up, and they're making fun of him and his God. But the calling was still calling. She got his hair cut off, and when he got his hair cut off, he lost all his strength. But he messed around, and the hair grew back. And Samson prayed and said, Lord, strengthen me just this once that I can avenge the Philistines for my two eyes. I know I've backslidden. I know I've done wrong. I know I've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I yet got a pulse, and that means God still has a plan. So Samson said, Lord, strengthen me just one more time that I may avenge the Philistines for my two eyes. And when they brought him to the pillars that hold up the Colosseum, the Bible said he bent down and pushed, and then he said, Lord, let me die with my enemies. Paul said in Philippians, the first chapter, verse 21, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. Yes, the Bible states that gifts and callings are without repentance. God does not change his mind, or does God change your purpose? So if some kind of way you mess around and got tied up and tangled up in some mess, and you can't get out of it every time you put that habit down, it doesn't put you down. You ever, you ever turned something loose and it didn't turn you loose? I was smoking and drinking and all that little crazy stuff, and I tried my best to quit. I went on record of throwing my cigarettes in the street, my weed in the street, and got up the very next morning, morning saying, Lord, what, what, I must have been crazy. All in the streets looking for my stuff. Paul said, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that that I would not, I consent unto the law, which is good. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that do I. If then I do that that I would not. There's no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. He had the can't help it. And then he said, oh, wretched, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? God does not change his mind. And he does not change your purpose. He said in Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 10, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. You see, before you came to this planet called Earth to colonize it with the, with the morals of heaven, he already had an assignment for you. And he knew in this assignment that periodically you're going to drop the ball. The Bible said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what he did, before he allowed the conception to take place, 
He did a preconception. David said, Lord, behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. But before God allowed the conception to take place between your mother and father, he ordained a preconception. Shall I explain it? He told Jeremiah in the first chapter, the fifth verse, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the world. So don't tell me you're too young to preach, because I had a preconception before I allowed the sperm to fertilize the egg, and then it attached itself to the wall of the uterus. I had a preconception before the conception took place. Nine months after the conception took place, that was an inception. That means you started your life. And after you started your life, that was the devil attempted an intersection, an interception. Y'all with me? Let me say interception. And while he was trying to do that interception, he was doing deception. Let me say deception. Because he knew that you were on your way and we were on our way to a reception. And when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time, what a time. The calling is still calling. Well, what happened to Peter? The first time he talked to Jesus, it was at a scene of a miracle. They were out fishing. And they couldn't catch any fish. And Jesus was ministering. And the crowd was following him. And they was thwarting him. So he said, I got to do something. So after Peter and them had given up on their fishing and began to wash their nets, Jesus walked on Peter's boat and said, can I, can I borrow your boat? And Peter allowed him to use his boat. So he went out in the water and preached to the people that were on shore. After he got through preaching to the people that were on the shore, Everybody went home, and then he told Peter, hey, man, launch out into the deep. And Peter told the Lord, Lord, look, I'm a professional fisherman. I fished all night long and haven't caught anything. Nevertheless, the calling is still calling. At thy word, I'm going to let down the net. When Peter let down the net, they caught so many fish that the net broke. So he had to call his homeboys in. When he called his homeboys in, they had caught so many fish that the, the homeboys' ship began to sink because of the fish. I, didn't, I fumbled over that, but y'all get that? They caught so many fish that the boat that they were in, the boats, plural, began to sink. And then Peter put two and two together. This is not just a man, oh no, this is not just a baby. And he said, Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. I'm too holy for you to be around. And the Lord looked at Peter and said, but now on, you're going to catch men. I'm going to make you a fisherman of men. So that was Peter's call. That was Peter's call. Well, Mark 1 and 17 said, Jesus told him, follow me, and I'll make you fish for men. Luke, the fifth chapter said, but now you're going to catch men. So what happened to Peter? Well, I told you I'm going to be a little bit rough today in my talking. You know, I, I want to talk age appropriate, but some, some of y'all are from the hood, and you ain't going to understand this. I'll come on down your street and, 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 and tell it like it is. Yeah, so I'm going to come on, come on, be a little bit raw. And so my question is, have you ever made a fool out of yourself? Now, 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 now I don't have that much more time to preach because God's going to do some healing today. Some people are going to join the church today. Some people are going to be saved today. So I need you all to get with me. And I ask you a question, and I will call names. So I'm going to ask you, but I'm going to give you a chance to volunteer. Have you ever made a fool out of yourself? All right, now, Pastor Walker, I love you, but now, I told you I was going to call names. Why come your hand didn't go up? 
Oh, you said, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> and so when you make a fool out of yourself, you doubt whether or not you can ever become what God meant for you to become because you can make a big fool out of yourself. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to move it. I'm going to say it quick. I'm going to have to catch it. The biggest fool I made out of myself, you know, just thinking right before I'm talking to y'all, I was in college. And here's how it ended up. I ended up with a blindfold over my eyes, standing there in front of my homeboys, in front of those women, in my birthday suit. Now, you talking about embarrassed. Yeah, so, but I, so I'm going to move on now. I told you I was going to be raw today. All right, I think I was a little bit too raw that time. But this is what happened. It all started with a special request granted to Satan by Jesus. Now, that didn't sound right. But it, Peter's problem started with a special request granted to Satan by Jesus. What was the special request granted to Satan by Jesus? Jesus told Peter, the devil desire to have you. And matter of fact, he's asked me for permission to have you and sift you as wheat. But Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you get through making a fool out of yourself and you get your head screwed on right again, I want you to use that grace and mercy to strengthen your brothers. You see, sometimes God will allow you to fall flat on your face because the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, verse 3, sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. So Peter Satan has asked me for permission to have you and sift you as wheat. And I don't think the Lord prayed that Peter passed the test because he fell right flat on his face. But he said, when thou art converted, he, he said, I have prayed for you. Not that you don't fall. Because Solomon already told us that sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance is the heart made better. And David already told us, Lord, it's good that I was afflicted because before I was afflicted, I went astray. Bless God's great name. Lord, help us today. So Peter insisted that he was better than the rest because he began to make mistake after mistake. Let's, let's look at the mistakes that Peter made. Mistake number one, Jesus was quoting the scripture when he was in the upper room with them. And the night before the crucifixion, he said, one of you all are going to betray me. And, of course, we know that ended up being Judas. But then Jesus quoted the scripture out of the book of Zechariah, the 13th chapter, verse 7. He said, all of y'all are going to be offended because of me this night because the Bible says I'm going to smite the shepherd and the sheep are going to scatter. And, you know, Peter talked too much. When the Lord gave them the word, Peter wants to argue with Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, Matthew might backslide. James and John might backslide. You know Judas is crazy. Philip may backslide. But, Lord, I will never deny you. I'll go to jail with you. I'll even die for you. And so Peter's first mistake was, Rejecting the word of God. You need to believe the word of God. If the word of God says, come off from among the world and be ye separated and touch not the unclean thing, and I'll be your God and you'll be my people, you need to come off from among the world. If the word of God said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the center, or sitteth in the seat of the scample, for his delight is in the law of the Lord, that means you need to cut your buddies loose. If you want to be blessed, you need to follow the word of God. There are two types of word of God. There's the written word, and then there's the spoken word. Jesus was quoting the written word, but he was verbally articulating a spoken word, and he let them know, all of y'all are going to be offended. 
So his first mistake was he didn't believe the word. His second mistake was prayer. Paul said, Timothy, I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. So that night when they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he took the disciples with him, but out of the 12 or the 11 at that time, he took three to go further with him, Peter, James, and John, and he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed. The Bible said he prayed until sweat came down his face like great drops of blood. And he said, Lord, if it's any way possible, suffer this cup not to pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. After he got through praying, he came to Peter them, and they were asleep. So his second mistake was he didn't have a prayer for life to an extent. You need to pray until you break through. You need to pray until you get a hearing from heaven. Isaiah 59 and 1 says, The Lord's hand is not short that it can't save, nor is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from you and your God, and your sins has hid his face. You need to pray until God wash you. You need to pray until God baptize you. You need to pray until God feel you. You need to pray until God heal you. You need to pray until God lift you up, turn you around. You need to pray until God set your feet on solid ground. And if you pray, you'll be able to stay. Oh, bless God's great name. You see, when, G, when they said, teach us how to pray, Lord, the Lord said, okay, here's how you pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. When you pray through, you'll have grace for the temptation. But if you don't pray through and the temptation come, you won't have grace to overcome the temptation. So Peter's second problem was he prayed, but he didn't pray through. Isaiah 58 and 6 says, Is not this the fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of the wicked, to undo heavy burdens, and that you may break every yoke? We need to pray until we get a hearing from heaven. You know, I, I'm going to give you another raw example. I tell you, I'm going to be a little rough today. I've been a praying man. Reason why, I, you know, I was a praying man because I married at age 22, and we didn't defile each other's garments before we got married. Now, now you'll get that next week. And then when I just got married six months ago, I was an hour late to my wedding, but I told the whole congregation, I may be late, but one thing about me and Lady Jordan, we have not defiled each other's garments. Oh, you'll catch it. You'll catch it. You'll catch it. You, 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 you'll catch it. Because I prayed until I prayed through. The Bible said, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And if I want to go and get personal with you, I'd go to Corinthians, the seventh chapter. He said, and I won't go there right now. But if you pray through, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Bishop, no, I don't preach long. If you pray through, you'll have grace for the temptation. We at my house. It's a little over 20 years ago. There's a teenager in my house. Okay, and we're we, we trying to help her get on the right path. And I'm trying to be a father figure to her. You know, y'all call me Dad Washington. Thank God for Dr. Butler put that name on. I'm proud of Dad Washington. That, 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 that's me. If I catch y'all calling Troy Dad Troy, I'm going to have a problem with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 but Billy, anyway, I'm just about through here. And, 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 and the teenager's in my house. And, and I'm trying to be a father figure to her. You know, because, you know, every time somebody, man, approach her, you know, he got his mind on the wrong thing. So as I caress her, she lays a wet one on me. I ain't talking about on the jaw either. She kissed me right strap dead in my mouth in my house with my wife in the other room. But guess what? I had prayed through. 
The Bible said in Proverbs 6 and 24, to keep thee from an evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of an evil woman. Lust not after her beauty with thine eyes, neither let her take thee with thine eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman is a man brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Yes, sir. So I had grace for the situation. And instead of me and my wife putting her out, we went ahead and put up with her. After a while, she got pregnant. She's spitting out babies out of wedlock. And I didn't remember, but she reminded me that I came and stayed with y'all because I was too weak. I couldn't take care of myself or the baby. And my wife taught her how to do the women things and stuff like that. And I said, well, you know, she's right. But the point of it is, if I hadn't have been prayed up, I wouldn't have this testimony to share with you today. God is a savior and a keeper. So his first problem was he did not accept the word coming from Christ. He said, you say I'm going to deny you, but I'm not going to deny you. His second problem was he did not pray through. And his third problem was he simply made a fool out of himself. He was following behind Jesus after they arrested him. And he was watching them beat Jesus. He was watching them spit on Jesus. He was watching them slap him and say all manner of evil against him. And then a little lady said, aren't you one of those disciples? And that's when he started backsliding. He said, no, I don't even know the man. And then another person walked up to him and said, yeah, you, 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 would, you, you are one of them. And Peter looked at him and said, man, you better get out of my face. I don't even know the man. And then the man came up to him to whom Peter just cut his ear off. Peter cut the dude's ear off. Jesus put the dude's ear back on. That dude's name was Melchus. He came up to Peter and said, you look like one of those. And matter of fact, you talk like one of them. And he looked at the man and started calling down curses. And so the problem was Peter had backslid, but the calling was still calling. So now Jesus has died. And now Jesus has been resurrected. And now this is the third time that Jesus appears to these apostles. And it's one thing about Jesus and Peter. They got into it very often. The day that Jesus rose from the dead in the book of St. Mark, the 16th chapter, verse 7, Jesus said, I'm risen from the dead. Tell my disciples and Peter that I said, meet me in Galilee. You see, Peter thought that because he had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that he was no more worthy to be able to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Jesus asked Peter a question, do you love me more than you love these? And Peter said, yeah, Lord, I love you. He said, well, then feed my lamb. You see, Jesus was asking about love on a divine level, but Peter was talking about love on a friendship level. You understand what I'm trying to say? He was saying, Peter, do you love me with the love of the Lord that you boasted about days ago? And Peter said, well, Lord, I love you, but I don't love you like I thought I loved you. But he said, go ahead and feed my lamb anyway. Oh, bless God's great name. So the calling is still calling. You're just right for God. I wish that my title would help me resist the devil. But my title don't help me resist the devil. So what happened to me the other day, you see, you see my personality, but my wife sees my character. You see my church face, but my wife sees my real face. And for some reason, I'm getting stronger. 
My mind is even getting sharper. But I don't feel like I'm there yet. And the tendency is to want to feel sorry for myself. Because I used to be a preaching machine. And I was moping around the house. And my wife shot me a text. Now, she was qualified to talk to me. Because I'm going to show you why she's qualified to talk to me. Hit, hit that picture. This is 35 years ago. This is probably my first time ever giving the right hand of fellowship to the Rose of Sharon Ministries. Guess who that is shaking my hand and receiving the right hand of fellowship 35 years ago? Guess who that is? So she qualified because she knows me intimately, and I'm not talking about knowing me the wrong way at the wrong time. And she wrote me a text, and I'm going to read it to you, and then make a call, and that's it. I don't run out of message. Here's what the, the, the text said. Don't give up on yourself. You still have so much more to do and give. Encourage yourself. She texts, the calling is still calling. Stop. Quick. Don't succumb to your feelings in the physical. God is a healer. And whatever you need him to do. And then she closed the text message out with, walk in what you read. Teach and preach. There is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. The calling is yet calling. Jesus told Peter, Lord, give me y'all give me five minutes, and I'll tell you I'm getting on got gotcha your way. Jesus told Peter, the devil has asked me for permission to have you so that he can sift all of your self-confidence. And so after Peter cussed everybody out and backslid, the devil had him just where he wanted him. Matter of fact, he quit preaching and went back to the fishing business. But although the devil had Peter just where he wanted him, the Lord had Peter just where he wanted him. What Satan meant for evil, God meant it for good. Peter didn't have any more self-confidence in his ability to preach like a noted Bible scholar. None of his ability to be a spiritual athlete, an ecclesiastical encyclopedia. He had lost all confidence. And the devil was saying, oh, I got him out the ministry. But the Lord was saying, oh, he's just where I want him. He has no confidence in himself. And now, in order for him to go forward, he's going to have to put his confidence in me. Now I can use him. The next time Peter preached, 3,000 souls came to the altar saying, what must I do to be saved? I'm tired of my wicked ways. And Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost is for you and for your children and for all that are afar off, as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Visitors, the calling is yet calling. And here's what the calling is saying to you. The book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 25. It says, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. So what God wants you to do, if you don't have a church home, we've got three churches here, one location. Bishop is all of our pastors. 
This is Praise Center Church that you're in right now. He'll be glad to receive you right now in the name of Jesus. But let me, let me, let me use a conjunctive adverb. However, Pastor Walker is a pastor. Repairer of the breach, worldwide ministry. Been to prison. So he knows about making a fool out of himself. Been shot. Given up to die. Died three times on operating tables. So he knows how to not look at you like you crazy because because he's, I still be watching Pastor. He, he, he's doing good, but I'm watching him from where God had brought him from. And last but not least, there's the Rose of Sharon Ministries. That would be me. That would be me. The brother that prayed through, and when the woman kissed me, I didn't kiss her back. But I prayed for her. Took her into the house. Nourished her, strengthened her. Until God raised her up. So if you want somebody... They won't look at you like you're crazy because you got some issues. I'm your man. I'm your man. Rosa Sherrod Ministries will take you in today. May we all stand. I'm not apologizing, but I'm trying to use some common sense. Glory, glory, salvation and honor, glory and power unto the Lord. Can anybody hit me with that? For Lord. the Lord our God is mighty. Thank you. The Lord our God is omnipotent. Said the Lord our God. Prayer is being offered now. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Do you love the Lord? Honor and power. More than you love those hootlums out on the streets. Lord, Your running buddies. For the Lord our God is almighty. Yes, the Lord. Lord God is omnipotent for the Lord our God. He is wonderful. We want to pray for you. The Bible said you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why? Because the calling is still calling. If you don't have a church home and you want us to pray with you and help you get some directions, we are available. Come as you are. Come as you are. Satan had Peter just where he wanted him. Had given up. But the Lord had Peter just where he wanted him. But for a different reason. God said, My strength is made perfect in your weakness. The reason why it was so hard for you to turn that drug to loose, or turn that boy to loose, or turn that habit to loose. The reason why it was so hard is because God wanted you to struggle so that you can develop compassion. You'll be able to help somebody once you've been through some things. That tribulation you went through, it was not designed to make you bitter. God allowed it so it was designed to make you better. 
Now you care. Now you care. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for the new faces, for the old faces, for the strong believers, for those that are hanging on by a thread, for the backsliders, and for everyone. Because your word says you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in you shall not perish but have everlasting life. Your word says, but you gave not your son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So once again, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We ask you to let you hide the word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Some of us are too mature to participate in the sin of commission. We've grown out of some things. I'm too old to be running around to my mom. Go bar hopping. But Lord, there's also a sin of omission. I may not be breaking the law, but I'm just not operating in my purpose. We're asking you to reignite the passion to want to please you as never before. Only thing we can do sometimes is embarrass people by calling them out and things of that nature. But God, you're able to speak to the hearts privately. And when they say yes to you privately, they'll come down and say publicly that I believe God. So Lord, have your way now in this congregation. We want to thank you for putting it on their hearts to come to the house of the Lord, the house of prayer, the house of praise, the house of worship. And there's not anybody in here that doesn't need you every hour of the day. So thank you for your word today. Let us remember that the devil desires to have us and sift us as wheat. But you praying for us right now that our faith fails not. I may have failed in a relationship, but my faith is still alive. So God, bless us to keep looking up to you. For you're the author and the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. calling is yet calling. God is still calling for you. Amen. God has not given up on no one. Amen. As long as you got breath, you still got a chance. Amen. Amen. Friends, amen, you do them wrong. They, they done with you. But Jesus still loves you. Amen. He loves everybody. And he still gives you that opportunity to come to receive him as Lord and Savior. We want to thank you for coming out this morning. And we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ with us on today. Amen. We do have some, some food in the back, not food cook, but we have some choice meats and stuff that we like to give you some groceries. Now, our visitors and, and people who have not gotten any, amen, let them go first. We have a freezer full. We have some food for you, amen. We have some food for you. Amen. If you can, if you like it, it's there for you. And amen. And we want to be a blessing to you today. We're talking about some high dollar stuff. Amen. And so you can have it. Amen. Stuff probably you just walk past in the store. Amen. We want to be able to be a blessing to you. So right after service, after we dismiss, you can go right in the rear. And then again, let our guests go first. And you'll be able, amen, Sister Walker will be back there. Amen to help them out, and she will distribute it unto you. Father, we thank you for standing. Father, we thank you for this time that we was able to come together. We thank you for the word.
God, let us know that you're still calling and you're still pulling on our heart. You're still pulling on us, Father. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that your spirit is always, and you always set the door and knock. And all we have to do is open the door. And you said you would come in and sup with us. Now give us traveling mercies. Keep us safe as we go back to our respective homes. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please go back in the back and get some food. Amen.